<laughs> Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared with my lovely wife Kara. Hello. And we are live, ladies and gentlemen. Live on a members only live shopping. Oh no, you know what? I actually messed up. Some of you guys are not allowed in here. I'm changing it right now. It's only taking two seconds. So just so you guys know, if you are in here and you're not a member, you're not going to be able to talk or comment. But you can, if you give a super chat, you can, or if you just become a member. Um, because this is a members live sharpening, but there are a lot of new members. I do not even know how many because in last night's live, we were given, I don't even know how many members and it takes 48 hours to register. So I, I can't even see how many we got. So I'm going to know probably tomorrow or after tomorrow. And I imagine it's a lot because we had a lot of amazing, amazing people in the uh, live last night. Um, Speaking of last night's live. Um, if you guys were there, that cop, I actually talked to him um, this morning and we, we might get together and um, do a live maybe in uh, our old neighborhood. So let's get into this. So today we are going to give away some some Japanese King Whetstone uh, diamond, or sorry, not diamond, <laughs> whetstone knife sharpener. So we have two stones here and it comes with a nice base. It's the exact same system we're going to be using. So this one's just a brand new version. It's a 220 and an 800 grit. Now we have some stones soaking right now as we speak. I'm going to, uh, grab one of them right now. Let me, uh, take this one and pull it out really quick. Just sitting in the water. So we have the 220 right here. So this is one of the stones, not this exact one, but we have the brand new ones that we're going to be giving away. We'll do that towards the end. So today we are going to be sharpening, and I'm going to give it up to you guys. Which one do you guys want to sharpen? Should we sharpen this Vosteed Chef Knife, which is a 9CR? It, it, the edge is wrecked. Daniel with another 10 bones. Don't you start today, Daniel. Good morning, Eves and everyone. I still have rounds in the chamber from last night. I can see that. Thank you, man. Um, where the hell was I? So we can either do the Vosteed. Um, it's basically a paring knife, five inch, nine CR uh San Mai, or we can sharpen up a folder. Would you guys rather do a folder or it doesn't really matter to me? Both of them need to be sharpened. Um, and they're both basically simple steels. This is N690. This is 9CR, kind of similar steels to some extent. So they're both simple steels, so we can sharpen them on these stones. Now, as far as these stones go, whoever wins, these are stones for simple or carbon steel. So you're not going to want to sharpen anything basically D2 and up. You can basically go up to about S35VN, um, but D2 would be considered higher than s 35 as, as far as uh, carbide uh, size and ratio goes. So um, we're talking about the folder. Okay, let's do the folder. All right, so we have the Kaiser Roach, an N690 steel. It does need an edge, and you guys should be able to see it down here. Let me just take a couple of passes really quick. I just want to feel on it. Lone Star says they he wants you to sharpen the one that will take the lowest degree edge. Oh, well, that would be, this one would take the lowest degree edge. That'd definitely be this one. Um, just because this one would take me much longer because Daniel, this one is so much thinner. Christiani, thank you and welcome to the Benchmaids. Um, so I do have a rag hooked to my belt. So I have just tucked in a, my pants. Is that and a, a t-shirt? Yeah, but it's an old beat up t-shirt. Um, so I can use it as like a wipe. Got some paper towels over here. Now, I have a little bucket of water you guys can't see, and I can splash water on You're top of this. not allowed to see it. So, <laughs> uh, because I did have the soaking while we were waiting in the lobby. Um, thank you, Daniel, for becoming a member. After sharpening and stopping, I can still feel the edge is not nice on my nail. Microchips. Any advice? Yes. I, I will give you some advice here in one second. What's um, the thing? I'm just going to let you know right now, if I ring this bell... Okay. Mm -hmm. It means that there's stuff you can't see. Like, I'm just going to keep track of the bell I today. I you can't it. see everything. I, I understand. And this bell is for James K., who just gifted five memberships. Thank you, James. Appreciate it, brother. Wow. Again. Another five. Another five. Man, you guys are 
just adding five more to the <laughs> yeah. chat. We don't even know how many we have. All right. So as far as M390 goes, with if you're rubbing your nail like this and you still feel microchips, that means you did not create a good burr on both sides what happened was was you probably got a burr on most of it but there were spots on the apex that did not create a burr on both sides another reason might be the way you deburred you might be um, being a little bit too aggressive with your burr removal now um, we are i am going to talk about today doing because if you guys watch a lot of times i teach a, a an edge trailing pass to do a burr removal Today, we're going to do a forward pass because I think that might be a little bit easier for a lot of you. If you guys try doing the, the edge trailing pass, it might lead to what they're talking about right now because of just not having the experience holding that angle going that direction. So if you've already gotten really good at going forward, then it'll probably be better for you to deep burn that way. All right, Joel, thank you for the 10 bones. I'm sharpening my shaman and deck of V2 today using Veneve Greater Dog Stones with the stabilizer on the nice. work sharp precision adjust. Thanks, Jared. Awesome. Sounds like you got a solid good, Jared good setup, setup there. Good setup. And then we got uh, 499 bones from Kevin Stewart hitting us with the Bouse sticker. Thank you very thank you. much. Thank Looks you. like a sassy lady. We appreciate with it. Some muscles. Thank you for the sassy lady with muscle sticker. So, as far as this knife goes, I Ooh. want to get about 20 degrees. I don't want to go too much lower than that with this. Maybe. I mean, I normally would do you about. You do a 20 on that, not a 17? I would. I'm trying to explain. Am I not allowed to be <laughs> no, part of the can. questions? I would normally do between a 15 and a 17 degree edge bevel. But I, it's it's not the thinnest behind the edge. And 20 degrees is going to reprofile it already. It started out with somewhat of a high angle, probably about 25 degrees. So I'm still going to be reprofiling. And then in the future, I can always drop it back down. I guess on a knife 17. like that, you this wouldn't won't be take using as long. for tasks that you really need like a 15 on. Well, it would make it a lot sharper. and But the, the thing is, though, is it would take me so much longer to do a 15 degree yeah. bevel. And it'll take me less time to do a 20, especially since I'm not using diamonds, right? So, go ahead. Ty Grzybowski says, hello, Kara and Jared. Thank you for putting my name first. That was very sweet of you. Um, I, have a <laughs> I have a question. I know that you guys probably answered this question a million times. Okay. What are the ideal grits to sharpen? And do you need <clears throat> a different grit for different steel? This is sort of a yeah, so I do question. I do have a full video on what grit you should stop at for each steel. So you can go look that up. And it's a, I got a full video. You'll know it's the right video because the, the thumbnail will have a bunch of steel names like M390, name Maximet. Um, I don't know the name of it, but it's like what grit for what edge or something or what steel, what steel, what grit, something like that. Um, so as far as what stone should you use? So for a coarse stone, you should always start out between 150 and 300 grit. That should be your starting stone always. The beginning stone should always be between 150 and 300 grit. Now, the only time you would want to start higher than that is if you're just honing. So anyways, um, that would be your first stone. Your second stone would be between 600 and 800 grit. And then after that, 1200 to 1500 grit so on and so on and so on the higher you get the more you can jump so you can jump from 1000 to 3000 a lot better than you can jump from 300 to 3000 you want to go slower because the those the, the lower the grit the deeper the scratches so the harder they are to get out and the more aggressive you need the next stone to take out the previous scratches um that that link that kyle just put in the chat that is the what edge for what steel video which is going to be just as Thank helpful you, to you the sure. one that i posted in the chat is what grit for what steel so very similar topics with a slight difference yeah that's the one right there um yeah he what? was asking about grit you've done both. i know this is the one he's looking for i'm saying both are in the chat both are yeah. in the chat yeah, um, no, I, this is an old one that I don't want referenced. Oh, you don't want your old videos No, referenced? because I, I messed up a couple, and I re oh. that's why I redid the video, okay. was because I had more knowledge. Okay. So the first video I did, there's about three steals on there that I was wrong about wrong. because I just didn't have enough experience on it. After another year or two of sharpening those steals and having hundreds of examples, I changed my perspective on it, and that's why I made the new one. So the one with all the steel names on the screen. Okay, is the so one that's the one that then the Kyle linked. So re reference the the four month old video that Kyle linked for the detailed information, because the question that you're asking isn't really like a um, 
here's the answer sort of question. It's an it's an answer. It has a lot of answers for a lot of scenarios. Well, there's yeah, there's there's always uh, variables, right? Like angle, uh, thickness behind the edge. What are you using it for? All those things. But I give you an average of what steels take what type of edges the best. So like, what steels take mirror polish? What steels do better with a medium grip? What steels do better with a toothy edge? I give you a good idea on some of them. That doesn't mean you can't take and do whatever type of edge What's you up, want Bama, on any Lama? of those steels. Say hi to your brother, baby. What's up, Bama? Brother Bama? Brother Bam. Um, okay, let's see here. James K. When oh wait, hold on. Let me grab Kyle's question. Kyle's question first. Uh when learning if Wait, when learning, if you don't have bad habits, would you, I'm sorry, I feel like I'm messing up the, in, the inflection here. When learning, if you don't have bad habits, would you learn to use both hands in same direction versus push pull with dominant hand? I would say if you can, because some people are going to be better at going back and forth like this. You're going to be better, better at holding your angle going back and forth rather than picking it up and putting it down because that you might not be able to land back on your exact angle without having lots of experience because it does take a bit of experience to pick your that's why i always say lock your wrist let me lift you guys up um, a little first bit. of all did, hey real quick yeah. you see your you, you look in the video doesn't that your neck no you really your napkin looked just like a horse okay. anyone go rewind it looks just look at my oh it's gone now Anyway, I have a Baby, come on. I have a delivery I gotta go grab okay, really go quick. Get it. Go ahead. Um, but James has a question. When sharpening a folder, how do you prevent containing the pivot and lock mechanism with particles and other gunk? I don't understand that question. When Read it again. sharpening a folder, how do you pre prevent contaminating the pivot and lock me mechanism? Oh, just try not to be super messy. If you use diamond plates, then you won't have no mess. But um, certain stones are going to be a lot messier than others. So it just depends on the stones you're using. Um, if you're really worried about it, don't use messy stones. Otherwise, you might have to tape it off. You can actually tape off the pivot so that stuff can't get down in there. But uh, keeping it clean wiping it down don't don't go really fast because when you go really fast that's when it like kind of throws stuff in there so but um yeah um i forget the last question somebody was asking oh, so forgive me if i was beginning to answer a question and then stopped oh the back and forth so when you go back and forth a lot, you want to lock your wrist. So if you look at me right here, when I go, when I lift off of the stone, so when I come across like this, now when I lift up to go back over here, watch how I do it. I'm keeping my wrist locked. I'm using my elbow to lift up right now. And then, so all I gotta do is when I pick up, my wrist is still locked in that same position. So when I set it down, it should hit the exact same spot or at least very close to it. So that gives you a better ability to pick the knife up and set it back down now if that's very difficult for you to do and you can see that you constantly keep changing angles then keep it on the stone like this keep it on the stone and just go back and forth a lot of times that'll be easier for a lot of people it was easier for me so and then that way you don't have to lift up and you're you can just keep the angle you just got to go back and forth with your elbow my thing is here What's your thing? My laser. Oh, is it? Uh-huh. So one thing I can tell Thanks, is Sam. using steels like this on these stones are not good because they're just so, these are, especially this one, the lower grits are a little bit softer. So my next stone, these are really hard. These ones are really hard, uh, but they're 1,000 and 6,000. This 220 and 800 is kind of soft and with steels like this even though it's a simple steel just like this this is going to be heat treated softer this is going to be heat treated a lot harder so it's a lot more it's it definitely wears the stone out a lot more than that one would have thank you thank you for the 10 bones this is good stuff jared you've really refined the process of filming while you sharpen and i appreciate it i appreciate you spanky thank you yeah, we got the um 
for Christmas, my mom didn't know how to get him, so I suggested for her to get him this webcam that we have right now, which has helped us really procure these sharpening lives in a way where if he wants to talk and show you stuff with his hands and then go back to sharpening, there's not like a big thing. Oh, by the way, why don't we make it bigger for them? Do you have a lot of hand showing that you need to do? Because I can make the sharpening part bigger if you guys want. Yeah, go ahead. So basically right now, I'm close to my apex, but I haven't hit my apex from here to here. So I have a big portion of not hitting my apex yet. So I need to continue working on this side until the grip pattern hits the apex and I have a burr from heel to tip. See, this is one reason why I'm not a huge fan of like whetstones and stuff. Not saying they're not cool and they don't have a purpose. I think they're really good for chef knives. Um, that's the one time when I do recommend them the most. But to me, I, why deal with all this mess and all this shit when I can just do a diamond plate dry, right? Um, or even a resin bonded diamond stone is just a splash and go. That's way easier than dealing with this mess. But like I said, these are really good. And I do think that you should learn on the different types of stones like Japanese uh, water stones and stuff because it gives you versatility. And these stones do work amazingly well, especially on chef knives. I, I honestly probably prefer to sharpen carbon steels on natural stones. The edges just come out so good. But there's nothing like a diamond plate, man. It just gets your edge so keen so fast and keeps a lot of bite. Any questions? Oh, I'm scrolling through. Maybe try to miss anything while I was going. Hold on. No, but there's a comment. Bama said the return to the top of the stone after you finish a stroke was always the hardest part for me. It took a while to get that return to the yep. same angle. Locking wrist is everything. Yep, yes, it is. Right, I have a hard time left. with locking my wrists while sharpening because I feel like all the things I'm used to doing with my hands, like the things that hobbies and things that I use my hands for all require the exact opposite. Like, um, you know, playing the piano and stuff like that. Like the last thing you want to do is lock your wrist. So it's very counterintuitive for me to keep my wrist that stiff while doing something. And I have a hard time. Yeah, with but it. they're just, they're not relatable. So no, I know. I'm just saying that like the things that I'm used to doing with my hands, I don't know. I just, I'm not used to like get it. movement with my wrist locked. I don't think most people are. Most things in life that you do with your wrists, but you, you don't can. lock them. But you can. You of gotta use it. Just like with anything. Just this is like riding it. a bike. That's the thing. So when you first started riding a bike, you weren't good at it. I promise you, you weren't. Oh, you I sucked. was a beast. You sucked. I got training wheels taken off when I was two. And once you get it, though, it, you can't unlearn it, right? It's like you're riding a bike right now. If you, you guys probably haven't rode a bike in 10 years or more. I bet you you still could, right? It's kind of like that. You just got to get that practice on the bike and start practicing so you get the muscle memory. Once you get that muscle memory down, it's just second nature. Okay, two simultaneous sort of question comments. Jerry Thompson asked, best brand diamond stone, and Bama asked, what stone is that that you're using? So This you is a King Water Stone. Everything's linked down in my store, Needs Knives store. I have all the diamond plates I recommend. I have resin body diamond stones. I have the, the King Wet Stones we're using today and giving away because we're giving away um, a set of these today too. Um, but yeah, I have everything down in the Needs Knives store. So if you guys are ever wondering any sharpen, sharpening supplies, honing supplies, whatever, it's all down there. Also, we do have <clears throat> the membership linked down in the description now. I'm going to try to link it in every video from now on. So just so you guys know, you guys, especially for the moderators, you can grab the affiliate link to become a member directly from the description right now. I just learned how to do that. So, all right. So we still are missing one little tiny spot of the apex right there, but we have most of it. I'm going to flip over to this other side and then I'll come back over to this side, other side because I'm getting a little fatigued on that side. Uh, question. Lauren69 says, waiting for my new Migron Acri based on your video. Any advice on angle and grit? The Acri? Yeah, A-K-R-I. 
Oh, what, what knife again? Do you again? want me to Sorry. show you? No, the... no. Would you, would you read it again? Angle and um, grit. What's your suggestion? For the... Here, I'll show you the For knife. the what knife? Migron Acre. The mig oh, the Migron Acre? This one. <clears throat> that one's in um, 14C28N. Yeah. So, not that it matters 17 it degrees happy. per side, and then you can go up anywhere from 600 to 5,000 grit. Dukes of Hazard, thank you for the 9.99 bones. What up, buggins? Watch a two-year-old video of yours, and it's night and day difference from where you've come. Narrated thank wise, you. hold the trigger this morning on my first Microtech Direct Delta. Well, good, good for you, for you man. That's awesome. Oops, free bell. I know somebody was uh, teasing me earlier. They were able to get one of the Microtech uh, MSIs. Jealous was I. Ow! 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 You know that wrong. I've already got a burr on the side, but my bevel is so much smaller, so I gotta lower my angle. You got a small ass bevel, boy. Or I should raise my angle on the other side, maybe, but uh Marcus, I think that was probably James K that did the membership gifting today. I think he was the only one that did membership gifting. I think uh Cadmaster did a dono. Yeah, that would have been James K that gifted you the membership if that was from today. Uh, we had a lot gifted last night, so it could have been a multitude of people, depending on when it was from. Um, do, you, uh, do you always want to find the original angle of the no. knife, or can you do 15 to 20 degree angle till you get it sharp? Yeah, you can change your angle. So the angle that's going to come on the knife is most likely going to be higher than 22 degrees uh, per side. So you're going to want to most likely lower your angle when you resharpen it because the angles that come on knives are usually high angles. So lowering the angle is going to make it slicier, make the edge retention last a little bit longer, but it's going to be less tough. So just know that the edge that comes on your knife is a tough edge. <clears throat> it's not going to be as tough as it is if you lower it, but it'll be more slicey and there's a lot of other benefits to having a lower angle. Now, the thing is, though, is that the lower the angle you go to, the longer it will take to sharpen. See, look at this. I already need to flatten this. I've only used this twice. Um, I'll raise my angle up a lot more. For some reason, this side, I have to hold the angle up a lot higher than the other side. I'm guessing the grind is slightly off, but uh, whatever. No big deal. Okay, we're gonna flip over to this other side. This is an 800. I'm just knocking off the bird, doing that pass. Is that a super chat, baby? I read it already. Oh. So, oh, Kyle, this thing, that thing I read before, he said he meant instead of using right hand for both sides of the blade versus using right hand for one side and left. Yeah, I don't other, do that. So you use both hands in the same direction. I flip hands because I'm ambidextrous. So yeah, it's, there's people it's that literally can do that. I personally me. have never done it like this where I'm doing a left handed. So I'm not going to start. I'm really good at flipping. So I flip hands. It's it's. And if I can way get a perfect to edge that. this way, then I'm not going to – not saying that maybe not in the future because I might try to challenge myself, but I uh, have no reason to right now. Is it okay to use a steel to maintain edge? No. Oh, you mean like those poles? Honing steels? No, do not do that. Yeah. That's not good for your edges, especially for anything more than um, a bottom-tier simple steel. Or basic stainless. Anything that's higher than basic stainless, which is basically every single knife, no, do not. Thank you, James K, for five gifted memberships. Wow, again with it. And then we got Lauren69, uh, member for three months. Thanks a lot for your answers. They help a lot. Thank you both. 
Um, wow, James with another five. That is crazy. You can see I hit uh, the toil right there a little bit. Going really fast. Not a big deal, though. It's a working knife anyways. And it has a beautiful sharpened tool and plunge grind, so that's definitely my fault. Um, but it just shows you how um, easy it is to do. Lone Star wants to know, in what scenario would you prefer not to have a toothy edge? Uh, it depends on the steel, because some steels you can have a high grit with a toothy edge. So it just depends on the steel, depends on what your your purpose is. Like um, some, uh, some tasks you might not want something so aggressive because of whatever type of material you're you're cutting you know like maybe it's um you know because you it depends on how toothy we're talking about because to me i like all my edges to have bite i don't care if it's a mirror polished edge i want it to have bite so i want to have a little bit of toothiness to it but there's a big difference between that and a toothy edge which would be a coarse edge coarse edge i'd be using for things like rope maybe cardboard in some instances but tell you i'll tell you what a mirror polished edge on the right steel does incredibly well with uh, cardboard. So, you know, that's why I always say my favorite grit is 600 grit because it's the most versatile. It's fine enough to be fine for the finer tasks and toothy enough to be aggressive for the toothier tasks. But shaving is one reason. Like, so like straight razor, straight razors is one where you don't want any toothiness. Not as happy with this as uh, I thought I would be. I think um, the stones are just, you know, they're not hard enough for, and I'm guessing this is he treated to like, I don't know, 59 to 60 or something. So it's probably not that hard of a steel, but this stone is somewhat of like a softer stone. So it's just not cutting as fast as I'd like or as impressively as I'd like. But like I said, for chef knives, it does great. But this is just a clear example of why I like to recommend uh, diamond, resin bonded diamond, things like that. Not that aluminum oxide would tear this thing up. So these are aluminum oxide stones, but they're wet stones. They're like oil stones, in my opinion. Sometimes they're a little bit better for certain. It just depends. It depends on the stones. depends on the steel. depends on a lot of things. So I don't want to leave make a broad statement like that, but I've had a lot of like hyper aggressive indies india stones or indie stones i think it's called they're aluminum oxide stones um renee says i got a question i bought some lapping film for my work sharp am i supposed to use that before or after strapping lapping films yeah. so lapping films are usually used depends on how many you got and what you got a lot of times people use them to just do the whole edge but a lapping film would be used for after sharpening, you know, you if you that would be your stropping basically. Yeah, that's what. I but it depends on what you're doing because, like, there's lapping films that are literally that's supposed to be your sharpening stone. So it just depends on what grit, what micron you have. If it's not a coarse, if you don't have a whole bunch of them from coarse to fine, and you only have fine, then it's going to be only for stropping basically. I thought it was for like in between sharpening and stropping. Like it's like a extra detailed process. No. No? Uh -uh. That would be just stropping. I thought I saw that in a video. No, that'd be just stropping or, or honing. Some dude, I think... I'm not saying you can't do that, but that'd be the same thing as honing. I watched that's, this... That's honing. That's not sharpening, though. No, but I watched this video of this dude, and he, like, went through all the stones, and then he went through lapping films, and then he went stropping. And he said he used it to, like... You can do that. I just real don't... real detailed. You can do that. I just don't see the fucking purpose. Because Whoa. if you already have... Whoa. A lapping film that goes to a certain micron. Like I said, unless if you only have a certain micron lapping film. Like, like say if you only have a, a, a 2,000 grit lapping film, right? And you want to go to 5,000 grit and you have a stropping compound at 5,000 grit, then yeah, you can use it right before that. But 
if you have a whole bunch of lapping films all the way to like 10,000 grit or 100,000 grit or something, why would you need to stop after that? You've already refined your edge to a point to where it's so fine. A strop's not going to do anything but make you go backwards at that point. So it just depends. It depends on what you're wanting, what you have, because lapping films, that's, you know, there's, that's like saying, um, uh, stropping compound or uh, sharpening stone. What grit is it? Um, you know, like what micron is it? You gotta, you gotta know, uh, what, what micron it is. So, you know, exactly. I think how the thing that it. I saw, he used a lapping film that was subsequent to what he had just sharpened. So it wasn't like he went back out of order. And like started over with lapping films he did it as like a fine tune between that and the shop whatever dave c has a question do you get problems if you were to sharpen the whole time using only edge trailing strokes i wouldn't recommend it um you can do it i did hear that uh sometimes doing uh dual grip edges that works really well but as far as just sharpening a regular edge i would say do edge leading this strokes. is what i meant and you can do both but i would say don't just do back strokes. but you can if that's the only way you can hold your angle then do it but i would say that you can if you can go backwards you can go forward this is what i meant like this kyle said the same thing renee is it's a process that's used after stones to fine tune the edge but it's before strop technically that's all I'm that's saying. basically what i said though i said okay, you that's but the I thing is too. is like like i was saying that if you have okay so if you have a micron that say let's say three micron right and your stopping compound is six micron you're not going to go from three micron back to six micron and then strop that doesn't make any sense you're going to go from your stone to the three micron um you know uh whatever it's lapping called film. lapping film and then stop like so it just depends it depends on what micron it is that's the point like, because some people, some people use it literally just for sharpening. They literally have met lapping films that go from 300 grit up to 10,000 grit and they go through all their lapping films. Some people use it just for honing. Some people use it for stropping. Um, so it just depends. But remember, stropping is the, the, the intention of stropping is to remove remaining burr. So if you have extra burr that's on your edge, like, so like say after I do a burr removal on this, I'm going to hit it on a strop to ensure that I got all the burr off, right? Once I've done that, stropping is pointless. There's no point to it unless if I'm like, say, trying to add bite to my edge with the stropping compound. Like, um, like say if my stone goes up to 10,000 grit and I realize, oh man, this stuff is, it's slick. It doesn't have a lot of bite. Well, then I might take a, a gunny juice that's less that's more coarse and then strop on it to to give me some give myself some more bite at my edge but the point of uh lapping films is to hone your edge is to refine the scratch pattern but it's so fine already you're not creating a burr usually when you get to a fine grit lapping film so you're mo so there's no point right what burr are you removing right so a couple questions. Yeah. Uh, la, la, la. Alex Hibbins, when removing the bird, does it matter which way you go, edge leading or edge trailing? So right now, that's what I was talking about um, earlier. So you're going to watch me. So a lot of times you'll see me do edge trailing to remove a bird. But that does take technique. Some people can't do it, at least right away. So if you're not comfortable with it and you've already been going one direction, just do the same way to remove your burr. So like right now, I am knocking my burr over to the other side. So now my burr is on this side. So now I'm going to go over to this side and I'm going to knock it back over. Um. <clears throat> Almost. I ask the other question. Yeah. Um, Bob says, what grit do you like for S35 VN and toothy, toothy or mirror edge? What medium grit? grit, 600 grit. Okay, and toothy. 600 grit, medium grit. Okay. Um, PC Space P says, how do I get my mirror polish less cloudy slash scratchy looking? I'm using vanilla till the two third micron, then gunny juice one micron. You're it's going too fast through your coarse stones. 
You're not spending enough time through You got to get off that PCP and slow down. You're going too fast through your coarse and medium grit stones, which are your most important. Those are the reasons why I tell you guys those are your most important stones. You can't get a mirror polish unless if you do the work on the coarse and medium grit stones. Those other stones don't even matter. It's about your coarse and medium grit stone. You have to be able to go from each progression and remove the last scratch pattern completely, replacing it with the new scratch pattern so that the finer you get, it's easier for that next stone to get rid of the last scratches. If you skip too far ahead, you'll be at, say, 3,000 grit trying to get out 600 grit scratches, and it's just not going to work, and that will lead to cloudiness. Okay, Leo Bob, on budget steels, what grit do you stop at typically? Let's depends say. depends on the steel yeah that yeah that's going to be really a really broad like i said watch that video yeah uh kyle you want you would you mind kyle or sid or somebody um or dennis somebody relinking that video or i can it doesn't really matter i just know if i say i'm gonna do it one of you guys will beat me because y'all are faster than me um and then Oh, he already did it before I even asked. Okay, never mind then, Kyle. <laughs> Just beating me to the punch. Um, da -da -da. Oh, yeah, PCP. I've beat that like three times. Three, three, three and a half. I'm not as happy as I, you know what? I'm going to go to this other fine stone really quick, even though I did wasn't planning on it with this steel. But I'm going to just to help knock this burr off a little bit better. I'm really not that happy with this edge, to be honest, off of these stones. Just because I'm, I'm. Don't get me wrong. This is a perfectly fine edge. I'm just a little spoiled, so I want to make that very clear. This edge is just fine for 99.99999 percent of people out there. Um, I'm just not that happy with it. I wish I would have done it on my my diamond stone. So I'm just using this stone. Now, this was too big of a jump, by the way. I should have used this stone first before this stone. This is about 6,000 grit. I'm only using it to knock my burr off and basically refine my apex a little bit. Okay. Kind of like I would use a ceramic plate to, to hone. Sebi YT19. Hey, guys, I came. Welcome. Uh, blades with Bill. What's a good micron for diamond emulsion? Oh, I just lost a diamond emulsion. emulsion. I know, but I lost the question. Flew away. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to use 12 micron gunny juice. Okay, this is okay. I got it back. This is 12 micron gunny juice on this. You can see right here. I have it sitting over here. 12 micron. And because the stone I came off of was 12 or sorry, 800 grit. I jumped to the 6,000, but only to take the burr off and refine the, the apex a little bit, not to sit there and refine the whole scratch pattern or anything. So, um, What's a good micron for diamond emulsion if you're only going to use one? Six. Okay. Not between six and nine. The, so the, 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 the higher the number, the, um, the, the more coarse it's going to be. So for micron-wise not grit. So if it's going to be six micron, that's going to be finer and more of a polishing than nine micron. But nine micron is still a, a shiny edge. So like if you're coming off of a stone that's say 5,000 grit, you don't want to use anything higher than like six micron. But six micron will be really good for maintenance, edge maintenance, sorry, edge maintenance and for coming off your stone and knocking burrs off. Okay, uh, PCP to build off what we were talking about before. He said, I'm spending like an hour typically on a knife. Maybe that's not long enough for a good mirror polish. I thought I needed lapping film or lower micron gunny juice. Does he need to go longer, you think? Uh, give me one second and I'll answer that. I just want to maybe move your chair a little bit. You're, you're well, hitting I'm me. Sorry. I know, I just need to not move a little bit. I'm not being mean. I'm just trying to get this on camera. All right, we're just going to test this really quick and see how if this will cut paper towel. You want me to make you bigger? Nope. It will cut paper towel. Not the best edge in the world, but it definitely cuts paper towel nice and cleanly. I don't know if it'll do an S cut. Eh, it does an S cut. So can you guys see that? Have you guys... Well, I said I would make oh, you bigger. Doesn't matter. Go ahead then. Make me bigger.
You guys see that? Mom. All right. That's about... Yeah, it's a little, it's not the best edge, but it will still do S cuts. So it's decent. It's definitely a good edge. I'm just not as happy with it as I would have been off of uh, diamonds for sure. But we are going to quickly, because these stones, I could probably, so like, let me just be clear. So I always say don't ever jump or don't ever start higher than like 300 grit to reprofile but if your edge is already set like you already have your bevel set like on this one that's been sharpened before i as long as i can find that angle nice and quick i can definitely just start from a thousand and then go up to six thousand as long as it's not doesn't have any damage as long as it's just to like to recreate a burr and knock it off. Like, I'm not trying to reprofile. I'm not trying to do anything but keep the same angle, create a little tiny baby burr, and knock it off really quick. Um, were you going to finish that question? Sorry, what was it? I'm spending like an hour typically on a knife. Maybe that's not long enough for a good near polish. I thought I needed lapping film or lower micron gunny juice. No, it's your time. Time is all, don't, it's not about how much time. It's just until sometimes it'll take two hours. Like it just depends, especially if you don't start with a coarse, coarse stone. That's why I would say start between 150 and 300 grit because that'll go faster. Then when you go to your next stone, say 600 grit, you don't have to spend as much time as the first stone. But you got to spend as much time as it takes to get that full 600 grit across the, the, the edge. Okay. Um, can you dry strap or uh, do you? You can, but it's not going to be as good as having an Gracian. abrasive on there. Can you please tell me how to pronounce your name, Gracian? I want to say it right. Can you dry strap? Yeah, sorry. You just answered that, right? You can, but it's not going to be as good as if you have an abrasive. You know, you want an abrasive. An abrasive is what's going to help cut. Um, and you know, it puts basically a microscopic abrasive on the leather, making it more aggressive with just regular leather. Yeah. You can knock a burr off and stuff, but it's not going to do it as much justice as if you had, you know, good, um, yeah. All right. I'm gonna... Okay, um, and then do, 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 do. is there a tip to be sure that the entire edge is blur free? What do you mean blur free? I don't burr free, burr free. Oh. <laughs> I was like, yes, oh, that's, that that's testing it through paper. Or is that mean so there's two tricks. One your polish. you take your nail. It, you might really mean blur. You take your nail, you go like this, and it should feel like glass. You should feel no nicks, chips, or anything. Like right now, I feel a couple little tiny spots. That tells me I'm not done. Another way is you can cut through paper from heel to tip and make sure it's a nice clean pass. Another way is the paper towel trick, like I just did. Because if you have any burr or chips, nicks, anything like that left on the edge, it will not cut through paper towel. Paper, you can get like you can trick paper a little bit, but it's not going to be super clean, which is going to tell you. But you need to spend longer. Um, okay. And then he said, when when am I supposed to knock the burr off when using the Veneve stone set? Is it when I get past the low grit stones? I never know when to do that. So what so you don't have to worry about knocking it off until your last stone, but every time when you switch sides, so like say right now, when I'm on this side, I'm gonna sharpen until I create the burr. Once I get the burr, since I've already done this side. I can go to my next stone. Now, when I go to my next stone, I can knock the burr off and then continue sharpening, but I don't have to. The point is, is that the last burr, if you've created burr on both sides multiple times, your last burr is the burr you want to knock off. Okay, real quick. So is it is it Gracian? Am I saying that right? Give me a yes or no. Gracian. Gracian. I hope that's correct. Because you come in here a lot and I want to be able to say your name. I want to be able to say everyone's name. It took me forever just to get Dennis's right, and I'm still not even sure if I'm right. The burr <laughs> removal is one of the most important parts, so don't take it lightly. That is 
extremely, extremely important if you want to get a good, you can have a super sharp edge and your edge is low quality all because of the way you deburred or created your burr and deburred. That's a very important part because think about it. When you, when you, when you're setting a bevel, right? You're sharpening on this side, you're creating a burr, right? You're sharpening on this side, you're creating a burr. Sharpening on this side, creating a burr. Sharpening on this side, creating a burr. Your last burr, right? Which would be the tips of my fingers right now. You want to knock off so that you reveal a perfect apex, right? But if that doesn't come off good, what'll happen? You'll have little chips in your edge. It won't be perfect like this. It'll be like this. So you, or, or um, there'll be burr left on there. So instead of it being like this, it'll be like this, where there's still a burr left on there. So you need to, to make sure that you have a good understanding of how to identify the burr and how to remove it on your last stone. Whatever your last stone is, if it's 600 grit, if it's 1200 grit, if it's 500 grit, it doesn't matter. Whatever your last stone is, you need to be able to knock that burr off. Now, you do not have to do it on your finishing stone, but you can. You can use your finishing stone. However, I would say that depending on the aggression of your finishing stone, so the lower the grit, the more likely you're not going to want to deburr on it. So like say if I was doing a 300 grit edge, right? I want a super toothy edge. I'm not most likely going to use my 300 grit to deburr. I'm most likely going to use a little bit of a finer stone or like a ceramic and then a strop. Um, 600 grit, yes. About 600 grit and up, you can use the stone, but you got to be gentle. No pressure because you're not trying to create teeth. You're just trying to snag the burr, which we're going to talk about in one second. Yes, baby. I'm not trying to bother you, no, but... Fine. um. Did you look, look at our background color and look at our background on stream? It's like the same. Yeah, it is. That's cool. You plan that? No, I didn't. It's just my favorite color. Um. So I'm going to create this burr, and then I'm going to show you guys <laughs> what I mean about removing it. And listen, I have tons of shorts on this. I have lots of shorts, lots of other sharpening videos that explain the burr very, very well. Watch as much of the content as possible. Don't just take this one video because it takes sometimes dozens and dozens of videos and dozens of times to see it, to get a clear understanding in your mind of how it should go, what it should look, how it should feel. Not all burrs are the same. Some burrs are more stubborn than others. Some burrs are more fragile than others. Fragile is what you want, but some burrs, a lot of burrs, many times, most of the time, they're not they're not like that they're stubborn and they they fold back and forth because it's think about it like this when you want to think of a burr think about a paper clip okay you have a paper clip say you you unfold it and you just have the wire the paper clip wire i think i might have one over here oh fuck it anyways paper clip wire right so you take your paper clip wire now what if you wanted to break it in half what would you do You'd bend the paper clip and bend it back, right? Bend it back, bend it back, bend it back, bend it back until bang, it'd pop apart, right? Same thing with the burr. So when you have your burr, you're going to fold it over one way, fold it over the other way. Now, hopefully, right then, it'll snap off. But in many cases, most time, it does not. You have to fold it over, 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 and then bam, then it'll pop off. Then you want to clean it up with the strap. Go ahead, baby. Um, but I'm a couple things here. Um, I'm gonna hit the super chat first, so I'm gonna get to your question. PCP super chat, Piper, five bones. Thank you, thank you. At work, have to watch later. Just want to stop by and say thank thanks you. for the info. Thank you, for jumping you guys in. Thank are you for awesome. The donation. Thank you. Um, and then reverting back one, PCP says, if I want, if I want to mirror polish edge a knife that's already factory sharp. It's sort of an oxymoron, to be fair. Do I need to reprofile it always, or can I start at finer grits to hone the existing edge? I wouldn't. I would because, um, so this is the thing, is that your, the, the factory edge is done by a belt. So there's two reasons why I wouldn't do that. One, it's most likely not a great edge. It's most likely a burnt edge. But the main reason why is your scratch pattern is different. So on a belt, the scratch pattern goes straight up and down. So if you look at any factory edge, you'll see, look at the scratch pattern, look really close to the edge like this, and you'll see the scratch pattern goes straight up and down. When you resharpen, it goes at an angle, which is, which is better. Kind of like a saw blade, right? You want the teeth to kind of go at an angle, right? Towards what you're cutting. So if I'm cutting like this, I want my teeth to run like this. So 
because your teeth are going to be doing that, it's it's not going to be as good. Can you do it? Yes, you can. But it's not optimal. What's optimal is replacing the new grip, setting a new bevel, um, even if you keep the same angle. So if it's a 25-degree edge bevel, you can do another 25-degree edge bevel, but replace it with your new scratch pattern and with a new apex. So you're going to create a burr on both sides and knock it off. If you start at 1,000 grit, it's going to take a long time to get those scratch patterns out because 1,000 grit, because most likely your edge um, is a 300 grit factory edge. It's usually what factory edges are, three, 400 grit belt, and then they strap on some sort of compound a compound wheel so it's basically like a buffing wheel they usually use so now you guys notice this is taking me a little bit longer than i was hoping and it's because i started on a thousand grit so like right now i would be done with this if i would have just started on the 220 problem is, is that 220 needs to be flattened so but i am almost done i do have a light burr across a lot of the edge but not the whole thing so i need to continue until the burr covers the entire edge All right, I think we got it. So, yeah, I'm going to go just a little tiny bit more. I feel a little tiny bit at the heel I might want to get right there, right at that heel. And you notice I'm kind of going at an angle. I'm just kind of rocking my whole body. I, my wrist is locked and I'm using my body to go across the stone and then I'm lifting my elbow at the last second. So I'm not even using my elbow to go across the stone. I'm using my body right now. This is a great way to hold your angle and make sure you don't veer off. Okay, we have a good burr. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a deep burring process, okay? So usually, like I said, I do the edge lead or edge trailing so i'll just go like this now the point of this let me explain this i'm going to flip it over to this other side the point of this is to knock the burr off you don't care about getting scratches on the edge so very very lightly this is one of the biggest mistakes people go to is they'll they'll do the, the edge trailing pass or they'll even do just a regular forward pass like this and they'll put pressure the, the pressure you were just using to sharpen Throw that out. No pressure because the burr is just going to snag. Like, say if this was the burr, right? You just want to catch the stone and snag off. That's it. So it doesn't take any pressure to do that. So it's very easy to knock the burr off. It's fragile. No pressure at all. I'm literally using just the weight of the blade, if that. Maybe not even that much. Still a little bit left right there. Remember, you can always do more, but you can't take back something. So, PCP. I got a horn. So, right now, I all can right. go oh, right sorry. to my burr. So remember, I used the thousand grit to refine my edge or to basically create a new apex. Um, and then I used the 6,000 to, to knock my burr off. We'll do a little bit more burr removal. Can I read that? Yeah, babe, go ahead. Uh, PCP, thank you for the 10 bones. Appreciate you guys. I know I ask a ton of questions. And you no, both, go ahead. That's hey, what, that's you're what here this for. is for. Yep. You both always come through for me, either on these live streams or in my IG messages. Y'all rock. Ask and I'm as many a questions as you want. Learning. Sharpening. Don't hesitate. Okay, so I'm strapping um, on 12 micron. Go ahead. Baby. I don't know which of you guys are rock studs off the top of my head right this second. I know some of them. I don't know. Got them all memorized. Any but... rock studs can get a one on one sharpening. Yep, that's what I was going to say. Um, and well, why don't you explain that to him really far? 
Okay, yeah, that's what I was going to say, is that if you are a Rockstead, meaning the top tier member, you do have the ability to request a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call. Or I it's suppose going to be on here. It'll be StreamYard, but it's just well, nobody just else will be here. You could do a phone call if you wanted, no, but it would be, sort of defeat the purpose. It'll be on StreamYard, just like we're doing now. But, but with just nobody be us. there. So really quick, what and I'm going to do, gonna get posted or anything. I have a little tiny bit of burr that's being a little stubborn, so I'm just going to take this corner of this wood, and I'm going to draw this through it three times. One, two three that's it see if the burr's left feels like it's gone so that's a trick for you guys that don't know that to if you have a burr and it's being stubborn draw it through some wood three times um wood is very soft especially compared to steel all it's going to do is remove the burr it's not going to hurt your edge at all just make sure it's kind of softer wood you know pine or something really doesn't matter but all right yeah we're pretty you doggone good i do have a little tiny bit right there like i said this is a little bit of a softer steel so it, you know the burr is going to be a little bit more stubborn than say something Thank with a harder Kyle. steel bob i gotta find the all right bobs. let's do a edge check hold on we gotta find the bobs First, we'll start off with some uh, <clears throat> paper okay can i ask this while you're doing that uh bob died Dikema says, for fixed angled systems, is it more important to have good stones and angle sharpening cube, or is it the actual systems? For example, if I had a Ruxian, Ruxian Pro with diamond stones and a good angle cube. Okay, so your system definitely is a big deal, because I've dealt with a lot of cheap fucking systems that just suck. Like they, they, it's difficult for them to hold the angle when you flip it, it doesn't match. They're rinkety, they're, they're, they move. So, your system definitely makes a big deal, but the types of stones you use to sharpen is also a big deal. So, it's all of the above. So, you can get a good system with good stones, and, or sorry, a bad system with good stones and get bad results. Just like you get a good system with bad stones and get a bad result. For example, TS you wanna... Prof has a great system with but their stones suck. Bad stones, yeah. But their stones suck. So you want to get if you get a TS Prof, you want to get new stones. And it's not that their stones suck, as in like they work, but they wear out fast, like super fast, like unbelievably fast. So it's better to just get your own diamond plates um, from. We have another Bob question, Bob Smith this time. Okay. Why are you going diagonally across the stone so you can hit the entire edge with each pass? Question mark. Yeah, basically. For shorter blades, your passes are more north and south. Question mark. Uh yeah, it's basically just so I can hit. It's a five-inch blade, and I'm just trying to. Ooh, I'm just trying to hit the whole thing. So yeah, it's um basically yeah, just to uh let me hang it off so I can can you guys see that? You guys see that cut? I'll do another one. So you guys couldn't see it. Um, um so but but yeah, it's so I can hit the entire the entire edge of the stump of the um the entire edge of the blade. But also, it's because of what I was saying that when I when I'm moving, I'm locking my wrist and I'm using my body, so it makes it. Sorry, I gotta lower you guys. It makes it to where with my body. If you watch my body, I can go across like this, and it's comfortable. I'm using my hips to just move across. So my my edge is on on here. My wrist is locked. When I want to get to the tip, I'll lift my elbow. Lift my elbow. But to go across the stone, I'm just using my hips, going back and forth. Cross and said like an idiot. The first time I removed the burr, it was with running my finger across the blade. That's not good. It's not a good method. And then 1911 no. asked, do you not ever use idea. cork to snag the burr? He doesn't. Yeah, I don't use cork, but, but yeah, I, I have in the past. I've used hard rubber. I've used hard plastic. I've used wood. I've used rubber. I personally, because my, my straps are always wood. Um, with leather, so I always have the the wood sitting here, and it's just easy to draw it across there. But I like; I'd rather remove it on the stone. Jared, but I have no problem drawing it as long as it's being stubborn. Antimatter wants you to use one ply toilet paper to see how sharp it really is. You think it would cut toilet paper? Grab some toilet paper. Okay, um, Jared, I'm gonna leave you with this question. Jared, do this you, one. Uh, do you still use close. the angle technique? 
if I was using a sharpening system like a KME to reprofile, or should I just use a, a <clears throat> scrub back and forth motion? What? Do you still use the angle technique with a fixed angle system? Your little technique. Well, no, it's a fixed angled system, so it automatically holds the angle for you. So with a fixed angled system, that's the beauty of a fixed angled system is it's already holding your angle for you. So there's no need to, what you want to do is you want to get a digital angle finder and make sure you're at the angle you want on both sides. So the trick to a fixed angle system is making sure you can match the angles on both sides. Because just because you get the angle on one side, when you flip it over, in many cases, it's a different angle. So you need to check it. You need to check it before you even start sharpening to make sure it's close. It doesn't have to be perfect, but close. Like if it's like 17.6 degrees, you don't want uh, the other side to be 25.6 degrees. You want it to be like 20, like 17.8, 17.3, right around there. All right, we're going to try to cut this beach. One ply for you, sir. All right, let's do it. I have two ply if you want to try that. Oh, oh. It does, but it's definitely rough. Yeah. Let me uh, pull this off. Let me go this way. I really feel like this is your best ever. Well, no, I example. said that this edge isn't uh, the best, anyways, but. But you're holding it taut, though. Doesn't that help? Well, how can I hold it the other like way? Like when you do it the paper towels, you don't hold it at all. Because I, this is flappy. How can I hold it? Hey, look at this. When I hold this, I can hold it. See that? How can I hold this like that? Well, here, how about I hold it, but really loosely? Like, I like kind of. That's what I was just up. doing when I go. Cut it this. like this. No, but I'm going to do it real loose. Do it now. You can't do it loose. That's what I'm saying. It has to have a little bit of tightness so that... Just do it on the dotted line. They'll never know. Oh. <laughs> Here, I can try to let it hang. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like, no, could you do that? Not with this knife. Not with that knife. No, it's just because it moves. Sure... It, look, wait, wait. It moves out of the way. There's you no have way. knives, I think, that have enough bite to ca catch yeah, that and cut it. Though. Not, not this that one, one though. Here, maybe, you know, I got one right here that's um, very, very sharp, but I don't know if it'll do it or not. No. No. Oh. Hold on. We should start the one-ply challenge. Here we go. Here we go. This knife might The one-ply uh, challenge. Let's see who can do it. Let me just try it first before I... Try. Okay, yeah, go. that one, I see, I see the, the, the difference there. Yeah. Nah, it's still catching. It's still rippy. Yeah, it's tough though because toilet this thing, paper is it's... Uh, very uh the particles that make up toilet paper are a lot less together to that yeah. paper towel, or real paper. Yeah. So even though his bite, like in person, right. I can see the bite grabbing on perfectly. Because like, look at that. Look at this. But then I... what happens is the toilet paper, the particles, they're so far apart that it just kind of starts to fall, which is why it's flushable, you know, as compared to paper towel and paper. But um. What Duggan thinks. Thank you for becoming a new member, man. We appreciate it. Um, but yeah, no, this is super sharp. Like, in order to cut through paper towel, man, a edge has to be very clean. The apex has to be clean. It has to have enough bite and enough fineness in order to do it. So you can't have a toothy edge that's not that's not refined and go through paper towel. It'll just snag the, the paper towel. So it has to be fine enough. To, to go through but then if it's too fine it'll just slide off of the paper towel so it has to have enough bite too so it has to have the best of both worlds that's why if the most perfect edges are going to be able to cut paper towel especially uh, for edc purposes maybe not for shaving purposes because shaving purposes you don't want bite like it's the exact opposite lauren 69 says on my ts prof could that the burr come real fast after flipping the knife do i need to continue or stop because if I stop, it's like 10 times less passes than the first side. So the that. Read, burr, that, read that again. Read that he's again. saying that on when he uses his TS Prof Cadet, yep. the burr comes really fast after flipping the knife. So fast. Yeah, than that's the what first it's supposed side. to do. Yeah. Do I need to continue or stop if it's fat? Like, okay, wait, 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 wait a second. So if you just started, if you just started, like you haven't reprofiled yet and you go across the, the edge and you get a burr, that's because your angle is entirely way too high. You have to lower your angle. Like I always say, you want your you want your scratch pattern to start from the top of the bevel and work its way down. Now, if you've already done one side 
and you okay. flip over to the other side and you've done that side and then you flip over and now you're on a different stone doing the other side, the opposite side, it's going to go faster because you've already set your bevel. And so it's already the angle you're sharpening at. Now, all you're doing is refining. The first stone is to set your bevel. The second stone is to refine the scratch pattern that's that that you made from setting your bevel. Then your next stone after that is to refine the, the, the scratch pattern from the second stone. And then if you have another stone after that, it's to refine the scratch pattern from the third stone. Then you want to make sure you get a burr, your final burr on both sides from your last stone, whatever grit that's going to be, and then do a burr removal. But yes, the last stones are going to go the fastest. The first stone is the longest. Okay. Let's get, we're going to give away these here in just one minute, guys. We got some King Whetstone Japanese water stones we're going to give away here in one second. The same ones we used in today's sharpening. Um, at least the, the, the first stone. Do you used. still want to use the sweeping technique when you use a. You might want to get a, a set of these. Uh, um, what's a, that mean, sweetheart? I don't know if it's just no me idea. not knowing the word. What does or, it say? I don't know. What's that? I can't see it from there. Well, Where, where's that over here? Pull it up so I can put it on the screen. Stupid mouse, man. Um. Right here. What's that? Do you still want to use the sweeping technique when you use a, I don't know what that is. A something. A GG, GG system. system. Um, I don't know what that means. I don't know if it's a brand. We just don't know. <sighs> I don't know what you're talking about. So. Okay, so I'm just going to guess you're talking about with a fixed angled system. So with a fixed angled system, what you want to do is you want to take, like, I'm just going to use something to reference like a stone. So like, let's say this is the stone, right? Let's say this is the stone. You have a fixed angled system, right? You sharpen like this, right? Like this, right? So when you sharpen, you're going to sharpen like this. So your scratch pattern goes up at an angle. So when you deburr, when you knock the burr off, you're going to start at the tip and run it backwards. Like you're stropping, no pressure. Remember the that you're only trying to snag the burr. So do two passes, doing a reverse pass. Go to the other side, same thing. Flip it over, same thing. One pass, then one pass, one pass, then one pass, then stop. And you should have a perfect burr removal from doing that technique. Perfect. Um, I put up another question Ooh, this for you. It's sharp, heart. boy. I'll tell you that this thing is pretty sharp. But that's what I'm saying. Like these are great for knives like this. Now I will recommend whoever wins this. I'm not giving you this stone. You might want to get the thousand, six thousand to go with this. The beautiful thing about the thousand, six thousand is they're harder. They're more splash and go. Yeah, you still want to uh, get them wet and soak them, but you don't have to soak them as long. But these ones are definitely softer. So they're going to need some flattening after a few sharpens. Oh, he said your strokes, should they be from heel to toe or should they be back and forth when sharpening on a system? Isn't that what you just said? Oh, yeah. You, you're, so it doesn't matter. And the reason why, okay, so this is the thing. If you're on a fixed angled system and say if you have a spot right here that needs a little bit more work, right? So you sit there and you're sharpening that spot, right? Well, when you're done, you need to blend in the edge. So you. Sorry, you need to go across the entire thing. You don't. You can start from the heel and go to the tip and then pick it up like that. You can do that, or you can go back and forth. But regardless, if you sit in one spot like this, then you need to blend that in. Okay? Never sit in one spot and do back and forth passes without blending it in. But yes, your angle's held, so it doesn't matter if you do back or forth passes. It's the same angle already. So the stone's doing the same thing. That's why you can work faster by going back and forth. But there's going to be times where you might want to just do single passes forward. So just like this. Um, okay, really quick. Hopefully um, that made sense. Uh, real fast, a yep. couple things. I yep. put well, that question on the screen for you, but one second. Right now I'm going to lift the camera up because this is all about questions and talking, and we're going to give the stones away. So... Um, if I need to lower, you don't it back, need to lift anything. If we I need to lower, have a if I need to lower it back, we can take one of the cameras off, baby. If we, <laughs> well, there you go. You wanted it. If um, 
If we need to lower the camera back down, I can lower okay, it back Okay, really down. quick. All right, go ahead. Bing bong, IndyCan. Bing bong. I'm a Patreon member, but unable to text on this live chat. Do I have to turn something on? So there is a difference between Patreon and members. This chat that you're watching right now is a, mem a YouTube members live. The Patreon um, is strictly centered around giveaways if you want to be a part of the patreon it means you want to be a part of the monthly giveaways and that is the purpose of it okay where we do you this know, month we we're multiples. giving away three uh so three people are going to win then three people are going to be able to pick whatever they want from mojave outdoors it's a way to support the channel whilst getting something back in the form of giveaways i don't even know what the most expensive knife is on mojave outdoors so um <laughs> th this expensive. right here is the membership so on youtube if you're a member what you are getting is the twice a month member lives the unique emojis and depending on the tier you can have one-on-one -on -one sharpenings with yeah. jared if you're a rock stud, you can do one-on-one -on -one sharpening with you me. are always welcome to watch the members lives um but you cannot comment unless you're a youtube member if this is the content that you would prefer to get and you don't care as much about just being part of the giveaways on patreon i would recommend switching to being a youtube member instead of a patreon um, but we have the two options available unfortunately there's no way to merge them otherwise we totally would that would be cool um so if i don't care about price would you get the ts prof cadet or the ko3 so i haven't tried the ko3 but i would recommend the cadet uh pro but you i recommend if you do get it to after you receive it figure out because you're going to probably want the flay clamp so there's like five clamps that you can get that are separate from the system that you have to buy separately that go to that system and they're for different size blades different thicknesses and things like that the one that comes with the system is is pretty good but you're not going to be able to do very small blades or very very low angles so you're going to want to get the flay clamps and then you can pretty much do everything with just the flay clamp and the clamp that comes with the system um, and then if you do want to get a different one, you can pick because they're, like I said, you can go on their site and there's a bunch of different clamps. So like I say, if there's one knife and you're like, man, these clamps are just not working for this knife. There's a clamp that will work. Now, as far as the KO3 goes, I never tested that one out. I've heard it's really good. I'm not sure how well it works with little blades. I'm sure it works great for chef knives and big knives, but I have no idea how well it works for small knives. So that's why I recommend the Cadet Pro because I know you can get the clamp that will work for little knives. Maybe the KO3 does too. I don't know. I haven't tried it, but the Cadet Pro, I've tried the Cadet Nero and the Cadet Pro. And I like them a lot. The Cadet Pro is the one I recommend, though. Okay. We are starting our giveaway. I am going to share a hashtag with you guys. Make sure you spell it exactly how I put it up. And that is how you enter into the giveaway. Um, if you are not a member, don't try to super chat in a hashtag because it... it I don't believe that'll work and we're only giving out to members anyway. So please don't um, do that. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and do this now. Um, I kind of like the 6,000 group stone. Man. All right. Like here is your, here really is like your it. hashtag. Oh, look, we're on here twice. You guys get double trouble. How Thanks, did that James happen? K. Can I just, I don't want to fully remove this. Can I just remove what? Can I just like not do that? Why? Why does it have to be like that? What's your problem? This Take you it, can't see. Just click one of these. Click one of these. Click that. Why? Just click it and then click it again. That's not what I'm talking about. What Sarah. are you talking about? Look at the screen. Oh, um, us twice? Yeah. That's because you have two cameras going. I know, but it's just weird. So you guys are gonna have to have us twice. Um, yeah. Look it's at okay. us. Look at us. All right. So this is the um the thing right here thanks james k this is in reference to james k who has donated lots of memberships um so we're, we're doing hashtag thank thanks with an s make sure you guys spell it right what duggan thinks you spelled it wrong please uh th throw in another one thanks james k you forgot the s in yours um thanks james k thanks james k that's what we're doing thanks james k make sure your spelling is right Give you guys a, a second there. If you don't, if you're worried about your spelling, just type it again. Uh, it'll only enter you once, no matter how much you type it. So if you're worried about spelling, just retype it. 
Um, and we'll we'll go ahead and wait. We're gonna give you about 30 more seconds. I have the KO3 Pro and let's see it now. I have the KO3 Pro with integrated angle cube. It works amazing. But the question is, does it work good for slip joints that are thin geometry at 15 degrees per side? That was the question. Because even like the Cadet Pro doesn't do well with that unless if you get the fillet clamp. The clamp that accepts very thin blades at very low angles. Daniel Cad with another... Five bones to the knees, knives, and James K. <laughs> thank you, man. I appreciate it. Um, thank you for all the members yesterday, guys. Man, it's crazy how many we have now. I can't wait to see how many um, we have tomorrow. James or whenever it was asking. Up. James K was yeah. asking, and we've gotten this question before: which supports the channel more, the membership or the Patreon? If you want to get down to the nitty gritty, it would be the membership. Uh, for two reasons. One, because uh, I believe Patreon takes out more taxes That's out of reason. the money. And then too. also because the Patreon is sort of a wash. It's more of just something we, we don't we make do. off of it. Um, yeah, it's just like people are supporting. We get the knives. We give them back. I'm sure maybe we make out a little bit. No, but we've never probably made money. Not. We've never made money that one time. Yeah, probably not because. Um, we've given it back every single time. Yeah, so it's more just, I guess, why do we do it? To give people stuff. We do it to give people to give back to the community. Yeah, because we yeah. want. Let's trust me, guys. We want to be able to make money on Patreon. No, I didn't mean just, why do we do it for us. I meant why do we do it for them? Because couldn't they? Wouldn't they just be better off buying the knife? But they're only spending three dollars. Yeah. and then winning. Yeah, yeah I just my yeah, brain yeah, weirded no, out for yeah. a second. Oh, no, it's great for them. It's not great yeah. for us. No, but but the point is though is that we want to grow the Patreon because I'd love to be able to make good money on the Patreon so that when I do do the giveaways every month, we're at least making out every month. I want to so be very we're just clear, hoping in though, the long run that'll happen i want to be crystal clear when i said why are we doing that i did not mean because of us i meant because my brain thought for a second that you guys weren't getting a good deal but you, guys you are deal. <laughs> yeah my brain like thought of it differently um should i change it over i'm trying to give to you guys um you you still are giving to you us with the can, patreon it's just that you can you're... donate through our paypal if you want to donate money without any taxes or anything being excluded you can just go right to paypal yeah, you don't have to do man. I, I'm, I'm kind of liking the six thousand grit stone out of all these. The six thousand is actually pretty good. I just obviously you can't use the reprofile or to sharpen, but you can use it to refine and hone. It's nice and hard because personally, guys, um, I love hard stones. I hate I'm I just kind of despise softer stones, and these stones they're they're okay, they're good for simple steels, but they're too soft for anything he treated hard like anything at 60 hrc or something or higher they're just not hard enough but this stone is this stone's nice and hard um no it's not going to cut carbides um especially with steels with high carbide volumes but it'll still work really um, good for simple steels and chef knives and carbon steel can stuff. i just say one more thing really quick about the patreon go ahead don't feel like Ugh. you guys aren't giving to us if you're on the patreon because the point is as part of our business is giveaways so you absolutely are supporting us still because if you weren't a patreon that would be coming out of our pocket and so it is still a form of support no matter which way you slice it, it doesn't matter. It all is going into one pool. It's absolutely helpful. I don't want you to yeah, feel like, absolutely. oh, I'm not helping. No, if no, that's no. what you want to do, because no, you are. You we just we're just are. able right now. Or our whole plan when we started Patreon was to grow it eventually to the point to where we were able to make something from it. You know, uh, but it's just right now we usually give back more than we receive, and that's in our order choice. in order to grow it. Yeah, that's completely yeah. our choice. We could just give one knife a month and then we can make money, but we just don't want to do that. So you are absolutely supporting. Yes, yes. Um, we appreciate it too. So thank you guys for all the support. All right, you guys ready? Let's draw this. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, we've probably had more than enough time. Here. Plenty of time. All right, guys, get ready in three, two. Oh, wait, I'm not ready. I'm not even five, on the thing. Four. Your mouse is backwards. Ten. Okay. Nine. Here we go. Three, two, one. Go. There are only 30 people. You got a good chance. You got a good chance. Real good chance. Real good chance. Except for everybody's name who's passing by. Yeah, not you. Hey, Seven. Seven. 19. You got recognized. And now you you won. And look, I noticed the thumbnail last night because I was staring at it like, what is that? You just won two King Whetstone Japanese water stones made in Japan. Um, 
I do have a, I think I created, I just made a short on these actually, if you guys want to watch it. Um, it's pretty good short. Um, Sebi, can you please do me a solid and email me at nevesknives at gmail.com? Make sure uh, that you do you give me some sort of a verification, like a screenshot linked, of you logged into your YouTube. So I you can, can make always sure. find our contact information at the bottom of the description. But nevesknives at gmail.com. Um, and I, I would, I might not get back to you immediately, but I will get back to you. And yeah, congratulations, Sebi. Grab it. This, yeah, we'll just pull it up. Congratulations, brother. Um, like she said, get a hold of us at Neves Knives at gmail.com. Uh, thank you guys for all the support. Thank you guys for hanging out. We appreciate all the new members. Shout out to all the new members. We do this twice a month. And like I said, anybody who's a rock stud, you have the ability to contact me and do one on one sharpening where nobody else is there. It's just me and you. If you need help with something or if you want to talk personal about something, we can do it. So um, that goes out to the rock studs. And what's up? We should start um, asking for ridiculous things for like when people win a giveaway. Like send me a postcard, like like a literal postcard. Go to the store, send me a postcard. It has to be from New York only, and I want you to write a poem mm -hmm. on it and send it to me and just request some weird stuff. I just want to see if anyone would be like, yeah, that's no problem. Like it was just easy for them to do that. Um, that would be interesting. Uh, normally we just request social security numbers, but you know, I would rather have a postcard. credit card numbers too. Yeah. I, I want a postcard please. Um, but anyway, just kidding. It is free. You don't have to give us anything. Just that email. And, um, if you're international, your address, if you're your international, address. I need not only your address, but also your phone number. Yeah. Hopefully um, you're not international. I feel like that name might be. I don't know. It looks international. And your, th th your thumbnail, thumbnail looks, looks like international. It looks like the master sword from Zelda. So let's I don't know what he, that let's means. Let's just hope he's in Texas. And... Where are you from, Sebby? I want to know now. I want to know right now. I swear if it's Poland, I'm going to be mad at you. Postcards would be cool, right? That's what I'm saying. Send in a postcard and you can get your giveaway. That's it. It you feels international. <laughs> He's probably going to be like Michigan. <laughs> like it's uh, California. Okay. Nice. Those are the most, okay. Awesome. All right. All right. That's all right, basically guys. international though. So to be let's fair. close this up by thanking all the new members um, and shout out to the people that donated all the new members. Cause we do have a lot now and we do appreciate it. If you guys ever want people that are members, if you guys ever want specific things, for us to do like say if you want a fixed angled system in the next sharpening or if you want us to sharpen a certain steel or if you want me to sharpen a certain blade shape or if you want me to use a specific type of stone let me know and then i can plan it for the next members live and i'll make sure i have that set up like today the reason why i used these was because i wanted to give away one of these but we didn't have to right if you guys would have requested veneve stones i would have sharpened on veneve stones or diamond plates or whatever so um, don't forget you guys are in control of that and you guys can let me know in, you know, in the, on Instagram or through email, what you guys want or what you guys need help with or whatever. And I'm more than happy to, to help however I can. So shout out to you guys for being so supportive and shout out to the patron members as well. We do have that giveaway coming up. You guys are getting there's going to be three winners, and you guys are going to be able to pick whatever you want from Mojave Outdoors. No, you missed that one. Daniel Cad, you're the man. Thank you for the another. Okay, five are you bones. ready? You want to see yes. what I learned, baby? Hold on. Wait, I'm doing. Daniel them. gets crazy, man. Okay. We might have to ban him. Gracian. Gracian <laughs> donated gracias. five dollars. No, gracias. I'm saying, I'm saying, gracias. Oh. Thank you for the five bones. Thank I'm you. sure he's you never heard that awesome. joke before. Thank you. I bet so you've much. never heard that joke before, have you? Well, how do you spell? How do you pronounce his name? Gracian. Gracian. No, I didn't do that. Gr R Gracian. Like that. No, Gracian. Nargel. Um, thank you, man. We do appreciate it. What's your thumbnail? You I like Mr. looking T? at people's like thumbnails. Mr. T. It might be. Looks like it. Or he might be Mr. T. Uh, you don't oh, know. Oh, yeah, he might be Mr. T. And yeah. he could be with. I figured that he, because just the way it looks, it looks like it's him. And and like that guy's team. like, yeah. Yeah, but I it could know. be the other way around. Oh, don't you dare. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, I know. He has <laughs> terrible jokes, right? Gracias. <sighs> um, it's okay. It was low-hanging fruit, to be what fair. What are you talking about right now? It was like Who's the time. Comment? Daniel. Daniel's talking about me talking about banning him. Oh. I said we're going to have to ban him. 
<laughs> oh, he's donating. That would be hilarious. <laughs> You're should, in timeout. You should just, donate another we dollar. We should just have it. the mods uh, time him out, give him verbal like, warnings. Hey, Jared wants you Listen, timed out one more donation, <laughs> and you're going to have to uh, Sit get a timeout. Time out for three minutes. Yeah. As soon as he gets done, five more bucks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. James K. Donated another five. Thank you. Oh, okay. It wasn't that long ago. But Thank you, James. It. We appreciate it, man. Wow, look at that. Oh, you know what? Good timing too, James. Waiting till after the giveaway so that the pool wasn't too big for you. But then when the giveaway ended, you're like, oh, okay, I'll give some more. Make the pool bitter now. That's funny. Good technique. Funny. I like it. I like the technique. So just now we had some members given. Yeah, and so, they're probably like, what? Probably you people watching the right now. There's probably people watching right now that all of a sudden just became oh. members. That's yeah, that, that was good. And could have won some stones, but no. I remember you warned Maurice once because he went crazy with donations. Yeah, I miss Maurice. No, I wouldn't. I would if no, I warned him, did. I was joking though. I we were joking, joking but never, you were like, stop. Obviously, I wouldn't stop somebody from donating. <laughs> Spamming I with I, donations. Trust me, we appreciate it. Okay, thank you, Seb. This, this I will get to that. This is a very expensive uh uh job. So, like just the donate the donations are massive help. So thank you guys. Like, I can't tell you guys that enough. Like, I, sometimes I feel bad because I go through them fast, but I appreciate them so much. They are like, they seriously are like the bread and butter of this channel. And it gives us the ability to, to have stones and different blades and different things and buy paper towels and shit. Yeah. So we, we do appreciate and it. And paper thank towels you. are expensive. They're not cheap. Ain't cheap. All right, guys. Thank you guys for all the support. Um, shout out to everybody and all the new members once oh, again. God. Daniel Cad coming in hot. He just I knew he want would. It to end. He says, this I'm going purpose. on timeout to the next live. There you go. Enjoy your you timeout, everyone. Thank you for the two bones. Don't leave the roll corner. Of paper towels. We love you guys. Peace. Bye.